the far north, where winters could last half a year and temperatures dropped low enough to freeze the sea, survival depended on more than courage. It depended on knowledge. Long before thermodynamics, insulation ratings, or modern engineering existed, the Vikings developed a series of techniques that allowed them to build warm, durable homes in some of the harshest environments on Earth. These methods were practical, ingenious, and in many ways, centuries ahead of their time. In this video, we will explore 10 of the most advanced Viking construction and survival techniques used to fight the cold. Each one reveals how deeply the Norse understood the land, the climate, and the materials available to them. And as we reach the final technique, you will see the one that mattered most, the method that turned an unheated longhouse into a small, self-sustaining microclimate of warmth and resilience. This is the top 10 Viking techniques for building, insulating, and surviving the northern cold. The first and perhaps most surprising technique lies beneath the feet of anyone who has walked through Iceland or Greenland. Vikings discovered the turf, a dense and living mixture of soil, roots, and organic fibers, could outperform nearly any natural insulator available to them. Instead of relying on wood alone, which was scarce in those northern regions, they carved great blocks of turf and used them to form the walls of their homes. Archaeologists have found that in some areas these walls were nearly two feet thick, trapping heat with an efficiency that rivals modern fiberglass. What made turf so effective was not just its density, it was alive. The root structures bound each block tightly, and the moisture content slowed the transfer of heat. In regions where winter temperatures dropped well below freezing, turf walls offered a quiet, steady resistance to the elements that few materials of the medieval world could match. serve warmth, Vikings built many of their longhouses partially underground. By digging the floor down into the earth, they tapped into one of nature's most reliable advantages, stable soil temperature. Even in the coldest climates, the ground maintains a relative warmth that does not fluctuate as wildly as surface air. This semi-subterranean design reduced the amount of exposed wall facing the wind, lowered heat loss, and created a shelter that functioned much like a naturally insulated chamber. Without understanding the term geothermal, Vikings nevertheless mastered its principles. Their homes used the earth itself as a protective blanket, softening the bite of winter storms and anchoring the structure firmly against the wind. Turf walls were never simple stacks of earth. They were crafted with care, shaped like bricks, and arranged in interwoven patterns that modern builders would recognize as structurally intelligent. The Vikings sometimes used a herringbone arrangement or other interlocking methods, creating microscopic pockets of trapped air within the walls. These tiny air chambers acted as natural insulation, slowing the transfer of cold and giving the walls a surprising ability to flex under pressure. In lands where frost heave and shifting soil could stress a building, this flexibility prevented cracking and collapse. The walls took the blow so the people inside did not have to. Viking homes were not sealed tight by 
like modern insulated houses. Instead, they were designed to breathe. Small openings near the floor and narrow gaps near the roof encouraged air to circulate. Warm air from the central hearth rose upward and exited slowly, pulling cooler, fresh air in at a controlled pace. This created a natural convection loop that maintained oxygen, prevented smoke buildup, and stabilized indoor temperatures. Studies of reconstructed Viking homes show that with proper airflow, longhouses could reach comfortable interior temperatures even when the outside world was 20 or 30 degrees below freezing. The design also helped prevent mold, a constant threat in cold, damp regions. Beneath nearly every longhouse was a base of dense stones, arranged not only for stability, but for thermal storage. During the day, the heat from the hearth soaked into these stones, warming them gradually. After the fire faded at night, the stones released that stored warmth, slowing the drop in temperature that would otherwise chill the home. This thermal mass effect is used in modern architecture, but rarely appreciated in ancient contexts. For the Vikings, it was an elegant and highly effective solution that turned the floor itself into a slow, steady heater, easing the harsh transition between day and night. Inside the home, warmth was precious and had to be managed carefully. Vikings often placed heavy stones near the central fire during the day, letting them absorb heat until they were almost too hot to touch. When night came, these stones were wrapped in furs or thick cloth and placed in sleeping areas, acting as early versions of hot water bottles. For people living in a world where winter nights were long and bitter, these heated stones provided comfort and made sleep possible, even when the fire had burned low. It was a simple technique, but one that demonstrates the Viking's practical understanding of heat retention. The Viking roof was more than a simple covering. It was a living structure. Thick layers of moss and turf were laid across curved wooden frames, sometimes reinforced with driftwood or even whale bones in the far north. These roofs created extraordinary insulation and tremendous stability. Their weight pressed down on the walls, tightening the structure against storms. The vegetation on top helped absorb rain and snow reducing runoff and adding even more insulation. On a windy Icelandic hillside, the difference between a bare wooden roof and a turf roof was the difference between survival and collapse. These roofs did not simply shelter the home, they anchored it to the earth. The Viking roof was more than a simple covering. It was a living structure. Thick layers of moss and turf were laid across curved wooden frames, sometimes reinforced with driftwood or even whale bones in the far north. These roofs created extraordinary insulation and tremendous stability. Their weight pressed down on the walls, tightening the structure against storms. The vegetation on top helped absorb rain and snow, reducing runoff and adding even more insulation. On a windy Icelandic hillside, the difference between a bare wooden roof and a turf roof was the difference between survival and collapse. 
These roofs did not simply shelter the home. They anchored it to the earth. In winter, the longhouse was not inhabited by people alone. Animals such as sheep, goats, and cows were brought indoors, separated from the living area by a timber partition. Their collective body heat acted as a natural biological heater, raising the overall temperature of the home. In harsh climates, every degree mattered. The presence of livestock kept the structure warmer reduced the family's need for fuel, and protected the animals themselves from freezing conditions. The longhouse was more than a home. It was a shared survival system in which every living creature contributed to the warmth of the whole. The most important technique, and the final one in this list, lies in the subtle yet brilliant understanding of how heat behaves inside a structure. Vikings knew that cold air settled near the ground and that sleeping directly on the floor could drain a person's warmth rapidly. To counter this, they built raised platforms along the walls, keeping their bodies above the coldest layer of air. Families with higher status sometimes slept in bed boxes enclosed spaces with curtains or wooden panels that held in their body heat. These small sleeping chambers created microclimates, trapping warm air and maintaining a consistent temperature through the night. Even in longhouses without advanced insulation, these bed boxes provided a personal refuge against the cold. In the harsh Nordic winter, this technique often made the difference between a restful night and a dangerous one. The Viking world was shaped by cold, wind, and darkness. Yet the people of the North responded with intelligence, resourcefulness, and innovation. Their construction techniques reveal a deep understanding of thermal behavior, airflow, insulation, and the natural properties of the land. Far from being primitive, their homes were marvels of practical engineering crafted by communities who learn to live with the climate rather than fight against it. These 10 techniques were not survival tricks. They were the foundations of a resilient way of life that allowed the Vikings to endure some of the most unforgiving environments on Earth. In their walls of living turf, their geothermal floors, their heated stones, and their sheltered sleeping alcoves, we see a people whose ingenuity continues to astonish modern scholars. This was Viking survival. Not mythology, but mastery of the cold.